Hi, Juniors. Just a few words on the Frederick Douglass that you read for <coughs> today. Look, um, one thing, right, is the emphasis he puts on education. So he learns to read, and he's really seeing that now as the path he's going to have to emancipation. And there's a, this is a, sort of like a process that he goes through with that, right? Like he first starts because his mistress is teaching him how to read, and that's okay, and that's good. And then she has she stops, and she becomes mean because her husband tells her to stop, so she obey. And then so, but he keeps pursuing the reading, and he's doing it through his friends out in the Baltimore streets, right? So he is he he's a slave in the household of the uh, <clears throat> Hugh Wald or whatever, and his wife. But he go and go out into the streets and and like meet other kids, and and then like these kids are like poor. So they don't have slaves, so they're, they're more sympathetic to him, and they teach him, they continue teaching him how to read. Well, as he's learning to read, he's starting to process some of the trauma he's experienced as a slave on the plantation. And some of the trauma of being an enslaved person is having no end in sight to it. And so it, that's part of the awakening that education brings, part of the awakening that the removal from the plantation, from the removal of the most extreme cruelty, is that you can really start to process and move through some of the anguish that's so much a part of every slave's experience, right? Um, <clears throat> the other thing that's really striking, I think, is the um, change that comes over his mistress in terms of her initial kindness, but just the fact that she gives in to this institution of slavery, that she doesn't challenge it, that she has a, she has a slave, and then ultimately that, that compromise changes her completely. So no longer is she a person of kindness and compassion, but she's a person of uh, exhibiting cruelty, right? Maybe not as extreme as some cases, but nonetheless, compromising with evil fundamentally changes a person. And we see that kind of uh, in there, throughout there as well. So, you know, <clears throat> on a broader scale, look, there can be no compromise with evil, right? At all. There can be no compromise with slavery. There, there can't really be such a thing, a thing as a good master, so to speak, I think Douglas would say, right? Because they have already compromised by being a master. And you, like, forget it. It's over at that point. You're going to be, you're giving over to cruelty at that point, right? So there can't be any compromise with evil is part of the message here. And this other thing about education being the, the, the starting point, moving toward emancipation, all right? These are two kind of central points uh, of the emergent abolitionist movement, all right?